Columbus Post 1975 and welcome to my Christmas message for 2021. It's funny because last year when I did my Christmas message I briefly you know talked about what a strange and quite frankly crappy year it had been for everyone and I honestly thought that this time the next year obviously currently right now um, we wouldn't pretty much be in somewhat of a similar situation but here we go anyway it's my christmas message as you know this is a yearly tradition for me and i absolutely love doing them i'm in the room again with all the ticking clocks because ticking clocks to me is a very very festive sounding noise but what do i want to talk about this year i want to talk about christmas traditions because we all have them and i've touched upon a few of them you know over the years such as certain specific christmas movies i think we all have a certain specific christmas movie whether it's die hard because yes die hard is a christmas movie or the greatest christmas movie ever made nas lampoon's christmas vacation or it's a specific version of a christmas carol uh, mine being the alistair sim version and then the muppets christmas carol and christmas carol is something that kind of kind of plays into this christmas tradition but uh, other christmas traditions obviously i have um i've just picked up my christmas edition of the beano which is something that i've read ever since i was a kid because they've always had a christmas special i will be opening this on christmas eve because it's it's christmas beano you have to read it on christmas eve that's the whole point of the christmas beano and even when i was a kid whether it came out before you know christmas eve because it comes out on a specific day during the week like most publications um i would save it for christmas eve that became a year in and year out tradition that i still follow this hat this hat is a christmas tradition this hat is beat up to all kinds of wank Christmas video I shouldn't say wank this hat is beat up to all kinds of fuck I've had it for about 10 years you've only seen it in videos over the last few years such as the last few years of doing because I don't know why I never wore it in this it always used to be my hat that I would wear to the pub on Christmas day and it used to have a light in here some or battery in here somewhere that used to work um, but I, and I wear it when I do my uh, another tradition uh, we will be doing one this week unless it gets cancelled in which case that statement looks a bit stupid um, a Christmas Eve uh, live stream with Mainmeister I wear it in that but basically it's absolutely falling apart and I could have bought a new one but I don't want to because this hat means a lot to me when it comes to Christmas because it's my Christmas hat. Got my Christmas TV guide, which is something I talked about last year about what a big part of Christmas as a child it was to circle what you wanted to watch at Christmas on all the TV channels, specifically terrestrial, because that's all we had when we were kids. But what I want to talk about this year is, and I can't be the only person who has this, which is why I wanted to ask this question, unless I am. <laughs> but some of the stranger and some of the more odd Christmas traditions you may have, or had, um, because this is one that I did religiously for about five years or so and then it fizzled out well no it came to a natural end it stopped because i moved away and it wasn't continued when i came back moved away to canada because where we went to do it london um had changed so much that logistically and i thought it was a nightmare to do beforehand but logis i'll get to the point logistically um it was just not going to happen anymore london when i got back from canada london specifically now uh, and this isn't a political video, so I'm not pointing the blame at anyone in general, but we all know who it is. Um, it's just not the city it was. And it certainly isn't for visiting on Christmas Eve, which is what this is. I had a Christmas tradition from the mid 90s right up to uh, till I went to Canada, which would have been so Christmas 2002. Obviously, Christmas 2003 I spent in Canada, hence my Christmas message from, well, two years ago um, <laughs> I can't believe I'm still crap at doing these but basically um, I absolutely love and adore Christmas as anyone knows and I absolutely love and adore Christmas Carol that to me is the pinnacle Christmas story sure I just mentioned I love you know National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation but Christmas Carol is the pinnacle of Christmas stories dependent upon which version we all have a favorite but that kind of bleeds into the fact that to me 
Uh, I always think of London at Christmas, whether it's 1843 or whatever when the Christmas Carol was set. To me, London is like the, the pinnacle Christmas location, uh, at least in the United Kingdom. Sure, Christmas is relevant to each and every one of us where we live, so you know, around the world, but I think it's safe to say, thanks to A Christmas Carol, most people have this idyllic image uh, in their head of Christmas being kind of like, you know, cobbled old streets in London town during the 1800s, or maybe that's just me. Anyway, so I think it was 19... 96 and this again was something that my friend uh, my friend Andy at the time did because I just and I've talked about this on my channel before and I'm not going to go into it too much because you know I've always been honest about it and people who watch my channel will know that but I've been diagnosed with depression and yet um, my friend Andy was the one who helped me basically put a, a boot up my ass and get, told me you know go and get this sorted and I you know got onto the road to recovery but it was 1996 and I just started, you know, doing it. Um, I, I went the route of medication, that doesn't work for everyone. So it wasn't easy and I wasn't feeling particularly great, but it was Christmas and I was still massively in the mood for Christmas. And so I did, you know, a year in year out tradition, which is just caning every single version of a Christmas carol uh, that I could find. And we're coming up to Christmas, I think it was the 23rd of December. Uh, I can't remember what day of the week it was, but basically, he said, have you ever been to London at Christmas? And I went, I've kind of been to London, you know, a week or so, maybe a fortnight before Christmas. So I've seen the decorations and stuff like that and all the stores, you know, gearing up and trying to, trying to sell everything and making themselves incredibly festive to promote Christmas. Never actually been there at Christmas. I mean, what do you mean? Go from Christmas Day? And he goes, no, 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 trust me. London is an amazing place uh, at Christmas Eve. It's like the most festive place in the world. And you've been watching all these Christmas carols. So trust me, you need, there's no feeling quite like, and again, I'm not rubbishing anyone else well, what their city is like at Christmas, or anyone in any location around the world, what their city is like in Christmas. I mean, culture is different wherever we go, so it will be a unique experience. But he said, honestly, Christmas in London um, is just, it's just an incredible, incredible experience. And you've been watching all these, you know, Christmas carols and stuff like that. I think you should experience Christmas Eve in London. And I go, what do you mean? That's just like, how does that even work? That's a nightmare. So basically, we started um, driving up to London on Christmas Eve by car. I didn't get a train. Um, obviously, that would be a nightmare within itself. Not that driving up there. Uh, was a particularly easy thing. It was a logistical nightmare, but we'll get into that. But we started driving up to London on Christmas Eve, early evening. Uh, so it was dark, going down the motorway, basically on a good day, two hours, listening to the radio and stuff like that. And that in itself was like a brilliant part of Christmas. But, and, and I, I was really kind of, you know, nervous, like pensive nervous in a good way, thinking, what, what, I, I don't understand what you're saying about London. And the point was, uh, and we used to get there, because back then in the 90s, you could park free. We used to, it's either before Hammersmith Bridge or, yeah, probably before Hammersmith Bridge, actually. We used to just turn down a road and park in front, in front of someone's house. Could not do that now. Absolutely could not do that now. Park in front of someone's house and then just walk around. You know, didn't do any shopping. Uh, didn't go to see, like, a Christmas gig or carols or anything like that. Or even go to church or stuff like that. It wasn't about that. It was about just walking around. This sounds so... No, because I only, you know, my mum was talking to me about this um, a couple of weeks ago and I completely forgot about it for years and years and years. And now I'm saying it out loud, it really does sound like an odd and, and silly thing to do. But just walk around. And one thing that I've always remembered about this over the years, and I would like to, you know, kind of revisit this tradition, but how would I get there and basically and stuff like that? And how would I park? Because like I said, you had a two hour drive on a good day, just there, just there in traffic. Not like, you know, bumper to bumper traffic, but it's Christmas. People going to London, people coming from London Christmas Eve. It was, you know, it was heavier traffic than normal. Then you had to try and find a parking space. We always lucked out. We always lucked out and managed to find a parking space and park for free. And whoever's house we parked in front of, when we used to do this, I'm deeply, deeply sorry, but it was Christmas. I love Christmas. The means justify the end. Plus, I was on a healing process for depression. Um, but yeah, walking down, you know, the, the, the streets of um, London in Christmas is just absolutely fantastic. And now that I've talked about that, I've got a complete brain fart of the main shopping street in London. It was just on my head. 
and now it's gone out of it completely and utterly. But the point being, going down in the, what the hell is the name of that street? Shouldn't say hell in a Christmas video. Damn it, where's my phone? <laughs> oh, look at this. Look at this for all the tech and bells and whistles. I've got to say it, mainly because of my OCD, and I'm not shooting this again because I'm in the zone, and that's what Christmas videos are about. So join me as we Google Main Shopping Street in London. I can't believe, this is it. You see, this is the thing about doing, you know, blogs in general, just off the cuff, with an idea that you want to talk about, but no script or anything like that whatsoever. <laughs> Main shopping streets in London. Oxford Street. Thank you. Well, it's not necessarily the main shopping street in London, to be fair. I can't believe. Ladies and gentlemen, this is how professional I am, even in my Christmas video. Main shopping street in London, not necessarily so, but it's certainly up there. But Oxford Street, because that is the pinnacle street for me and my memories of this at Christmas. And, and yeah, there, there was people absolutely everywhere. The decorations were everywhere. They were on. You had to go up uh, in the evening because there, there's no way you're going to enjoy the decorations. Also, had to be cold. That always made it Christmassy. And we'd go in shops and stuff like that and just see, like, huge numbers of people. And we never bought anything. It was never about going there and buying anything. It really wasn't about that. It was just about sucking up the atmosphere of Christmas in London. Again, this sounds incredibly odd even to me saying it back but i love doing this so much and you know I, and it's funny because it really does a cliche it may sound but christmas really does bring the best out in people and these people could have all been massive dicks to each other all year round but you know you bump into people on the street and stuff like that and people will be excuse me excuse me sorry 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 you'd actually hear you'd actually hear um merry christmas from people you know around you in the street and stuff like that certainly in stores because you know well i would hope they wish you a merry christmas if you just dropped a couple of hundred quid sorry i sound cynical but that's not the point and it's weird i remember saying to andy oh my god this is the strangest weirdest thing ever but it really does and it's not like it didn't feel like christmas to that point it, it, it not at all but it really did make it like a very very special christmas sort of moment which is i'm in london i'm in the home of christmas because of a christmas carol uh i can't recall if it ever snowed and to be perfectly honest if it did probably tank down the snow we wouldn't have gone anyway because you know it's england it takes just that much snow and the entire country shuts down but the and, and then the highlight was trafalgar square christmas tree again that was that was something else it just made it this absolutely wonderful experience the people were all nice to each other there was loads and loads of them decorations and stuff like that christmas music blaring out everywhere uh carol singers on the street santa's collecting money stuff like that it just really did it felt like a scene out of a christmas movie which to be fair is this is real life and christmas movies would you know uh, simulate this but you know what I mean hopefully I'm doing this justice so yeah no money spent whatsoever other than you know driving there fuel stuff like that never bought anything walk down Oxford Street couple of other streets stuff like that maybe stuck our head in a pub or anything like that if you could even get in one and um, yeah and ended up you know uh, at Trafalgar Square looking at the Christmas tree and it really 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 made it Christmas and I remember saying to my mate that's the oddest thing ever I never thought that would be such a brilliant wonderful experience how old was I in 96 I don't know 20 maybe 19 but the point being it's definitely around about then 96 because I can remember going in like you know store the Virgin Mega store um, obviously we went to more places in Oxford Street uh, and seeing PlayStation games uh, and import PlayStation games. Um, I think I may have bought some of those over the years. <laughs> but, and then, then you drive back and you'd get back kind of quite late, you know, in the evening. And driving back was a lot easier than it was driving there. And that in itself was like kind of, kind of nice as well. And you talk to your mate and you were spending Christmas with a friend as well. You're spending Christmas with a friend that you wouldn't spend it with on Christmas Day because you'd be spending it with your family. So that was a cool thing in itself. I really loved it. I really, really, really enjoyed it. And then once, even though I got over um, depression and stuff like that, we just did it. We just did it every year. It got more and more difficult, more and more difficult places to park and stuff like that. Some of the traffic, there were accidents and things like that, you know. It, it, but 
it, it, you just sucked it up and you persevered and you did it. And like I said, it got more and more difficult, but it got to the point where it did not feel like Christmas. It did not feel like Christmas until Christmas Eve and we spent, okay, and that was all we did at most, at max, absolutely, probably no more than pushing um, three hours because there's only so much you can do walking around even though you're soaking up all the ambience and the atmosphere and people singing and stuff like that but it really did and would it have been as much a Christmassy thing for me to me if I didn't have such a love of you know um, Charles Dickens and A Christmas Carol and even then knew the book off by heart and stuff like that and so I always had this image of London being like the one place it was the most Christmassy place in the world. Again, that's just me. I'm not saying Christmas is rubbish in any other city around the world. Um, I'm not, <laughs> not gonna lie. Bristol doesn't really hold much of anything to London, even back then, but yeah. Um, so we did it, and we did it for 96, 97, 98, 99, and uh, 2000. And you'd get home and you'd be absolutely knackered because you'd have to, you know, get up the next day early because of all the arrangements for Christmas and going to, to certain members of the family's houses and stuff like that. But it never put a down on you. You were never kind of, you know, tired and grumpy because you were tired or stuff like that. You still thought that it was totally, totally worth it. That you had this really weird Christmas tradition where you had to go to London in the evening, um, you know, let, let, uh, early, uh, early evening to sort of, you know, late evening and wouldn't sometimes make it home to kind of like, you know, midnight and stuff like that. But yeah, it, it became, for those five years, it became a big, big Christmas tradition. I absolutely loved it and looked forward to it. And people, friends and family would just think this is the oddest thing, you know, to do. You're going to the pub Christmas Eve? No. I'm going up to London. Oh, what for? You got like somewhere to go, people to see, stuff like that. No, we just... Just going to walk around London, suck in all the Christmas goodness, ambience, atmosphere, and go and see the uh, the tree in Trafalgar Square. Because the tree in Trafalgar Square is always really, 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 you know, kind of famous and interesting and a big tourist attraction because it has to come from Norway because of World War II. Anyway, um, look it up. <laughs> uh, this video will be just stupidly long. But yeah, so people could never understand this. And then the next day you'd be yawning and stuff like that. And even yawning a bit around the uh, Christmas dinner table. It's like, well, what did you do last night? Uh, yeah, me and Andy went to London again. And again, it's like, why? What, what, what's this traction? He said, if you haven't done it, um, I can explain it. I mean, if anyone from this video or watching this video lives in London uh, and at Christmas, uh, you probably don't even want to be anywhere in the built-up city, you know, where all the, you know, the shops and stuff like that are, you know, the main, 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 you know, uh, areas and stuff like that, because that's not what Christmas is to you. But again, maybe because of my love of Christmas Carol, uh, that that was that was it that was the attraction and it became an attraction for those five years even saying this out loud now it sounds it sounds odd but thinking about it and talking about it now I remember how much I loved it and how much fun it was and that you could have fun by not spending any money or doing much more than just walking around and soaking up the, the sights and seeing you know and seeing it, you know, the best in people that you could see, because none of these people were like, you know, normally I'm not saying it's, you know, London's a horrible city, um, but, you know, like, you know, population wise and stuff like that, now everyone's, you know, um, incredibly unpleasant, but certainly at Christmas time, and I'm sure that's everywhere, um, but it's just like people just had that goodwill. Again, that may sound like a cliche, but just had that goodwill. So, Oh yeah, I, I thought I'd ask, you know, does anyone else have, have or had what other people might deem an odd um, Christmas tradition? And this was mine. This was mine for, uh, you know, five years. And obviously then I spent, you know, Christmases in Canada, as I mentioned in my Christmas video from two years ago. But when I came back, it just it just wasn't feasible anymore, like congestion charge and stuff like this. And, and you know... There's no free parking and things like that. It just, it, it's sad because I would like to do it again, at least just once, to see if it's still as enjoyable as I remember and just like truly feels like a really, really Christmassy moment. Um, maybe I'll get on that one day. I really should, shouldn't I? Because like I said, this five years may not sound like a massively long time, half a decade if you stop to think about it, but it was a really, really big part of my Christmas and literally was the moment where Christmas went from just being Christmas is coming to Christmas is here. So, as I said, I would love to know if you, any of you out there have or have had what other people might deem 
a very odd Christmas tradition. And I would also like to say, and I hope you all have an absolutely fantastic Christmas. Um, and also have an absolutely wonderful New Year. Because it cannot get any worse than this. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I'd love to know what you think. And happy Christmas.